people, this is Luxury, and you're watching Lux Do This. Respiration is a chemical process which involves gas exchange between the environment and the body, providing oxygen for cells, removing carbon dioxide from tissues, producing energy, and regulating acid-base balance. Respiration requires breathing, or in fancier words, pulmonary ventilation. Breathing is basically inhaling and exhaling. Such processes can be observed in the respiratory system. To get a better view, we'll be observing this organ system using a toad, because dissecting a human body is a whole nother level. Toads can breathe through their lungs and skin. Breathing through the skin is called cutaneous respiration. The toad's thin membranous skin enables the movement of gases between its blood vessels and the external atmosphere, since a requirement for efficient respiration is a thin and moist environment. However, for this video, we'll be focusing on pulmonary respiration, since as humans, we don't really have the ability to do cutaneous respiration. The toad's respiratory tract is made up of the larynx, glottis, vocal cords, the lungs, visceral pleura, alveoli, and bronchi. At this point, you may focus on your screen to get a better idea. The primary pulmonary respiratory organs are the lungs, which are thin-walled spongy structures covered with the visceral pleura. It is connected with the assistance of the bronchus at the base of the laryngotracheal chamber. Its walls consist of air sacs called alveoli. For toads, Pulmonary respiration starts when it closes its mouth and lowers its buccal cavity. Air enters the external nares, then moves to the internal nares. The air then remains in the buccal cavity since the glottis still remains closed at this stage. In the second stage, the used up air from the lungs is released when the glottis opens quickly. The air moves through the buccal cavity and is exhaled through the open nares. In the third stage, the fresh air that was kept in the buccal cavity moves to the lungs when the nares close, the glottis opens, and the buccal cavity rises. Lastly, the glottis closes, keeping the air in the lungs, then the first stage repeats. Now for the physiology of breathing in humans. When we inhale, our diaphragm contracts, increasing the volume of our lungs. From this, Negative pressure allows air to move from the atmosphere and into the lungs. This happens because, according to Dalton's law, gases move from high pressure to low pressure. Conversely, during expiration, our diaphragms relax, increasing the pressure in our chest cavity, thus forcing the air out of our lungs and into the atmosphere. In the case of the toads, since they don't have a diaphragm, what they do is they lower their buccal cavity, which act as a pump. When air goes into their nares, the air is pushed into the lungs due to the contraction of the buccal cavity. You can observe that during inspiration, your thorax expands, while during expiration, your thorax reduces circumference. Inspiration and expiration is most of the time involuntary. This is called quiet breathing. Contrary to that is forced breathing. When exhibiting forced breathing, our thoracic cavity expands or shrinks more compared to quiet breathing. A breathing cycle comprises one inhalation and one exhalation. Our respiratory rate can be measured by the number of breaths we take per minute. After exercising, we can notice that our respiratory rate increases well, when we relax, our respiratory rate is low. This is because during exercise, we need more energy. Thus, more carbon dioxide is produced as a waste product from cellular respiration. At this moment, chemoreceptors signal the brain to increase respiratory rate so as to exhale the excess carbon dioxide and inhale oxygen. Another thing affected by carbon dioxide is our breath holding capacity. Each one of us has a breath holding baseline. However, as carbon dioxide levels change, our breath holding capacity deviates from our baseline. But how about oxygen? 
our brain could not detect the level of oxygen in our body. Thus, it uses carbon dioxide which serves as an indirect signal to indicate the oxygen levels in our body. To show this, we will be having a special guest. Here is Graxel to perform two of our experiments. When breathing into a paper bag, she is re-breathing exhaled air, thus putting carbon dioxide back into her blood or her body. When there is an elevated level of carbon dioxide, her brain interprets this as low oxygen level, thus there is an urge to breathe as soon as possible, decreasing her breath holding capacity. Now for the second experiment, breathing maximally decreases carbon dioxide in the blood. Her brain interprets this as a high oxygen level, thus there is no urge to inhale. Hyperventilation is characterized by rapid breathing. This is when you exhale more than you inhale, thus decreasing carbon dioxide in the blood. As what I have said at the beginning of this video, Respiration contributes to acid-base balance or the regulation of pH levels in our blood. The level of carbon dioxide can change the pH of our blood. When the level of carbon dioxide decreases, acidity also decreases, which results to alkalosis. Alkalosis causes blood vessel constriction, reducing blood supply to the brain. That's why we need to counteract this by letting a hyperventilating person breathe into a paper bag in order to increase carbon dioxide level as explained in the paper bag experiment. Other problems in breathing and respiration are hypoxia, dyspnea, orthopnea, apnea, and asphyxia. The cause of breathing difficulties can be determined by using a stethoscope. I'm sure you have noticed that when we go to our doctor, our lung health is checked by using a stethoscope. Breathing produces respiratory sounds. When you put the stethoscope on the inferior part of the larynx, you can hear the tracheal and bronchial sounds. Ideally, the stethoscope must be placed on the triangle of auscultation found at the inferior part of the scapula because at this area, there is less blockage of sound waves since the thoracic cage is not covered with muscles. A smooth flow of air in and out of our lungs indicate healthy lungs, while a wheezing or rattling sound signifies a congested lung. And that is all for the video. I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more, you can check out my previous videos about the urinary system, which also talks about acid-base balance and the external and internal anatomy of the toad. If you liked the video, give this a thumbs up and subscribe to my sister, Lexer. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye! Bye.